Hey guys, Justin here with J Heart Model Works coming to you with another update on the Lamborghini silhouette from Testers. To be totally honest with you, the silhouette is done. Now, I finished it on Thanksgiving weekend. I had a nice long four day weekend with very little to do and lots of build time. So I've gone ahead and I've knocked it out. Now, the footage in this video is from right before I finished the assembly. And the reason why I'm not doing the full, you know, final video here is because there was a lot of detail, especially the interior stuff, that is going to kind of get buttoned up and a lot of it might disappear once the car is fully assembled. So I wanted to do one more update and go over all the little bits and pieces and the cool stuff before it gets all packaged up together. So that's what we're going to be doing in this update. One other thing, the exhaust, which I'm not actually going to go over in this video, but the STL files for the exhaust as well as the seatbelt parts that I'm going to show you in this video, those are now for sale on my Colts 3D store. So if you are interested, those are available. There's a link down for all my designs down in the description. But the exhaust files are now up, as are the seatbelt retainers. So, that being said, let's go ahead and flip this around and take a look at what we've got. Let's start with the body. Almost everything on the body is finished. The paint came out really well. Everything has been sanded and polished. I went ahead and applied the ceramic coating on here as well. I have our door cards installed on the insides. I 3D printed up some mirrors. I was really pissed when this happened. I had gotten everything together, even got the window installed, and then it got dropped. I was doing so well. It is what it is though. There's not really much you can do about it at this point. We have a toll tag in place, and that's covering up the mount point for the original kit mirror. We have our registration sticker with November of 2023. I have added a 3D emblem for the Lamborghini logo on the front. I have some of those for, I, for, I think I got them from Hero Boy. Uh, and they contain a whole bunch of different Lamborghini, Ferrari, and Porsche emblems that are uh, kind of a 3D. We have our turn signals as well as our fog lights are installed. You know, front bumpers in here. We've done some of these other vents and just some flat black. We've done bare metal foil for our door latches. And I actually went and found Lamborghini's font to get the silhouette logo in there. There's a Lamborghini logo back in there, and that is a metal transfer. That is from Zoomon, which I get my Zoomon stuff from Scale Riders over in California. Really like how the turn signals turned out and the tail lights. That all looks good. And we've got that custom Texas license plate back there. Rear bumpers are installed. Everything looks really good on the body. There are two things that are not on the body yet. Uh, the first one are the windshield wipers. The windshield wipers for this kit are designed upside down. That's the mount post for them. Those are the holes. So they should go that direction. When you finally get these installed correctly, they're upside down. 
So I've actually looked and the actual silhouette windshield wipers do not do this. And the mount holes are on these two sides. Not sure where the heck they grab these windshield wipers from. But if you look at them, these are right hand drive windshield wipers. So I found some online on Colts 3D. I'm printing them out right now. We'll see, hopefully they will fit and sit right because I really don't want to mess with that. And there's holes for windshield wipers and I don't have windshield wipers. The other part that is missing off the body, the only other part is the rear view mirror. This is the kit's rear view mirror, which um, that's just not impressive. I get it. It's a kit from 1970-something, but still. I have 3D modeled and printed my own, which there's a little base there. I'm going to cut off of those supports. The plan is that that base should sit right about there and I should be able to get that to install. In theory it should fit right behind the glass. I'm going to test fit that before I, I glue it into place. I may have to glue it actually on the glass but I'm going to try not to. So that's it for the body. Chassis wise things are looking really good except the 6x9 speakers had to go. So I have added a little bit of plastic card underneath there. I tried to fill it as best I can. I may no do another round of glue and flocking just to fill this in a little bit more. But when I was doing my planning, I did not realize, I mean, I knew the glass had to go in there, but I thought that glass set right up against this back wall. And I was not prepared for the fact that the glass has like a lip that pushes it forward. And that glass sits right dead center where the 6x9s are. So not only does it look bad, but the 6x9s hit the glass and keep the interior from mating up with the body. So the 6x9s just had to go. All of our flocking is done. I went ahead and glued the seat bases in before I did the flocking. That way I could flock around them. And you will see that the seat belts are in place. These are not kit parts. The retainers for the seat belts I 3D designed and modeled. So this is the bottom. And you see there's an opening in there that the ribbon is designed to fit two millimeter ribbon or 1 16th inch, which is what I use. And the ribbon slides in and comes out through there. When it gets to the top, it goes into these holes here. But these are completely open on the bottom. So that's what it looks like from the front. On the bottom, it's completely open. So I have drilled a 2 millimeter hole underneath here. So when I fished the ribbon in, I was able to pull it through and then pull it out the back. This is not glued in yet. It will be glued in whenever I go to put everything in place. But for right now, everything is still loose at the top. So that I can pull these out and I can adjust them where I want them before I glue them into position. Once I get them kind of set in where I want them to be, I'll just add a little bit of glue under here, glue the ribbon to the underside of the parcel shelf, and then cut the excess ribbon off, or just tuck it in there. I may just leave it just like that. It shouldn't be an issue. We have our center console done. That all looks really good. We also have our front suspension installed. I'm not a real big fan of the whole posable suspension, but it's in there. Uh, I'm not going to be using the whole little gimmicky steering wheel cog thing. I don't want to mess with that. 
So we have our seats. These are 3D printed from Black Box STL. And those are hobby design seatbelt latches. Like glued onto the sides. So that all is going to look really nice. I like the way the two browns go. This is Zero Paints. It's Kuwako for the light brown. Which actual Ferrari Kuwako should be a little bit lighter than this. This is more along the lines of what Ferrari's beige should look like. And then the darker brown is Ferrari's chocolate. We call it like Chocolato or something like that, but it's some Italian-ish version of chocolate. But those are both zero paints, which I did the door cards to match as well. We have our dashboard. That is all assembled. I don't know if the actual car does this or not, but the kit has the turn signal indicator gluing into the dash. That's really weird. But there is all of our detail paint done. These are not part of the kit. I 3D modeled the pedals because it's a convertible and there is a chance that you would see where the pedal should be and I wanted that detail in the kit. As far as the dash goes, those are not decals. Uh, what I did though, I took some Vallejo white and I thinned it with water. And I put a drop into each one of those gauges and I let it sit and dry. And I put another drop in and I let it sit and dry. It took like three days to get this level of white built up. I didn't want to brush it in there because then it would cover up all the detail. But putting it in as a wash and letting it dry, it builds up layer after layer so that you get the white background and the little black marks in there for all the speed and like tachometer marks. And then I just went in with a... 0.3 millimeter mechanical pencil and some red and I just touched the needles with the red to get those marked in there. I'm pretty happy with how that all turned out. Got a little red and orange light in there according to my research that's what color those should be. Tapped in the little lock on the glove box so all that looks really good. I've complained about the kit steering wheel before. Yes, it is technically historically accurate. This is what the steering wheel for a Lamborghini Silhouette looks like. It's incredibly stupid. It looks like somebody stole the steering wheel out of a lowrider that someone stole from a go-kart. It's terrible. I have 3D printed up this steering wheel, which I think again comes from Black Box STL. I added just a little peg in here. Actually, I think I 3D modeled it from like two cylinders just to fill in that hole. And then this little nub goes in where the little sprocket is supposed to go to do that whole gimmicky steering wheel turny thing. But we're just going to glue all that in place like that. And that should look a lot better than that incredibly stupid steering wheel from the kit. Last thing I do want to talk about on this update are the wheels. I am incredibly happy with how these turned out. Splash Paints has a brand new color called TE Bronze. And this is the bronze for the Volks Rays TE37 wheels that are, you know, synonymous with the Nissan Skyline, the GTR. I've got this color from three different paint manufacturers now. I know I've got it from Zero Paints. I think I have it from Gravity. It may be someone else. I think it may have been Gravity Spain. 
one of them is entirely the wrong shade. The other one is incredibly grainy. It, I mean, it just looks like you see individual metal flake and you should not for a wheel. I mean, it, it looks like gravel. It's absolutely terrible. This is absolutely perfect for that TE37 bronze. These are not TE37 wheels. These are, I don't even know anymore. I think they're ADV ones, but I'm not certain. They are, I think these are the same wheels that I used on the 240Z build that I did with Sean. And I did them in a gunmetal. But this bronze is an absolutely gorgeous color. We've got our Brembo's in there that I did in a metallic black. And I used some Vallejo red and brushed it in there. And it sunk down into the modeled in Brembo logos. And then I just came back after it dried and removed it with a wet cotton bud. And those look really good. When you combine that bronze with this red, in my opinion, that is going to look fantastic. That's going to be a really good color combo in my opinion. Alright guys, so that is going to wrap it up for this video. Uh, by the time you see this car again, everything should be fully assembled and it should be basically for the final and I'm hoping to have that probably in a few weeks. I went ahead and did the November 2023 date on the sticker. Today is the day after Thanksgiving. I literally just finished editing up the glass video from where we have sanded and polished out that glass. If you remember, it was in terrible shape. So you will, by the time you see this, you will have already seen that video. But I plan to have this build finished up this weekend. So it will be finished in November, even though you won't see the final until, honestly, you may not even see this update until December. That's going to be it for this one, guys. Thanks for hanging out with me, and I will catch you on the next one.